everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Queen's Wish, The Conqueror! Last episode, we made our way over to Fort Darkfen here and managed to secure it. Finally, we have a massive influx of metal, of iron, and we're soon enough going to get so much more. That said, it's time for us to move over and actually meet the natives here. Oh, Haven report! We got no theft risk here, and... Well, there's slight rest in the Aria lands, but we're fine. Overall, we got six wood, four stone, three iron, two quicksilver, and our quicksilver is maxed out. We can probably sell some of that quicksilver. We're not using as much, so I'm quickly, quickly going to take a moment to sell some of it. Uh, Dagfin, I would, no, I would like to exchange resources. One, two, three, four, five. We can only sell five. That's fine. Or maybe it's just the budget we have. Either way, I'm fine with that. Okay, now let's make our way to the town. Some of the guards are still waiting outside, watching for Ukatish raiders and clearing the camp of pests. The real action is, of course, happening inside the fort. Indeed, as I know. You're chinned, which is over here, as we know. There are farmers all around chinned. The soil is decent, but the people live rough lives. The constant cold, dirt, and damp wears them down. They keep their distance. The Yucatish fear and mistrust outsiders. They don't want to talk to you until they have to. Indeed. We're just going to there are guards watching the roads around chinned. Their shields, their shields bear a brown and a red stripe. It reminds you of the sash and the warrior that greeted you back at Ganelspan. You try to greet them, but they just nod and march by. At least you're allowed to pass. And this is the town of Chind. Just taking a look around it, as I do. And let's go in. You enter the Ukatish city of Chind. It is, by Ukatish standards, wealthy and luxurious. It is still a heap of logs full of mi a miasma of smoke and swamp stink. Only the politeness drilled into you by your mother carries you through. Everywhere you go, the people grow still and quiet. Then they find reasons to be somewhere else. The hostile stares of the Ukatish follow you wherever you go. It's not insolence, it's part of their nature. So, it looks like this is a clan hall, so... We'll go there last. We'll investigate everywhere else first. I'll be going. The Bottomless Fen. Okay. As you walk through the common room of the inn, there are a lot of icy stairs. The Yucatish never miss an opportunity to quietly let you know that they don't like you. Then the innkeeper clears her throat, clanks a mug against the cauldron, and says, Welcome, visitor. Regu regular conversation resumes. We don't get many travelers like you. The unfamiliar for the Yucatish is always bad news. I'm Masilda. I'm Masilda. Tell me about your inn. Chind is one of the largest towns in the Yucat. A miserable, disgusting star to your eyes, I'm sure, but it's important to us. Don't mind the other patrons. They're all nervous. It's a difficult time. What sort of visitors does Chin get? Merchants and warriors and miners and visitors from other clans. Even the occasional trader or envoy from the aerial woods or the Vole. Far less since Haven left, though. Since Haven left Sacramentum, our nations all sort of retracted into themselves. You expect trouble. The northern clans have always had troubles, but it's even worse. The Ganel are full of rage. They've even attacked Havenites, and the Bolgan, they're always greedy. Haven returning has only made everyone jump it. There's been fighting. What are your services? You can have a room for the night for three coins. A round of drink for two. All right, that's all for now, thanks. I don't really need either. I mean, I'm going to investigate the rooms, but I don't need to sleep. Okay, moving on. Oh! Envoy Asena. You spotted this woman's cunning eyes from fifty feet away. 
Your many years in court left you able to spot a skilled courtier. Her boots are muddy, but the rest of her clothing is immaculate and stylish. She wears a narrow sash of pure white. Keeping anything white in the swamp must be painfully difficult. She approaches you and gives a little curtsy. I am honored to meet you, Prince Rupert of Haven, envoy of Queen Sharon the Third. And to whom am I speaking? I am Envoy Asena of the Borgen clan. She touches the white sash. I speak for King Borgen the 53rd, true and rightful leader of the Ukat. I have come to issue an invitation. Nice sash. Thank you. Forty years into our rule, we Borgen changed our clan color to white. We keep our sashes clean. We will show the world that the Ukatish are not all disgust in swamp folk. What sort of invitation? King Borgen the 53rd invites you to his royal court at the home warren to the east. You are granted safe passage, and you will be treated with luxury appropriate to your rank. Why does King Borgen wish to see me? He knows that the mighty Empire of Haven wishes to deal with us, and he wants you to know that you are welcome. He hopes for productive conversation. If I may be so presumptuous, I would add a bit of advice of my own. What is your advice? The Ukad has four clans of importance. Some of them are upstarts who wish to take the throne of the home warren for their own. They will offer you bribes and flattery to try to disguise their weakness. I advise you to not listen to them until you hear what the actual king has to say. He can offer you richer tribute than any other. I will go and visit your king. Envoy Asena gives a deep curtsy. I am pleased to hear it. My work done, I will return to the home warren, a part of the Ukat that seeks to rise above the mud and sickness of the past. We will try to be suitable in your eyes. Then she turns away, heading out of town as fast as she can. Interesting. Chin to mining office. I imagine we'll get a job here. This is a workshop and office combined. Miners come here to register their claims and to have their iron checked for quality. Iron is the main strength and wealth of the Ukat, and they take it very seriously. There is one man who is clearly in charge. He is also far more interested in ore deposits than people. He looks you over, confused about why you are here. I am Kamlo, master of mines. You are no miner. Actually, I am a prince. Kamlo ponders this. Oh. I've never met a prince. A lady many times, but no prince. I think King Borgen has three princes, but I haven't met any. You have weapons, but no picks. You are a warrior as well as a prince. I am master of mines. I make sure the vital business of iron and rock goes, lands goes smoothly. When needed, I pay bounties. What does a master of mines do? I process new claims. I handle complaints about thieves and peat bogs. I sample Ukatish iron that is mined and smelted. I make sure that the iron we sell does not hurt our sterling reputation. <laughs> sterling reputation. Yes? It's a metallurgy joke. Yeah, I get it. Claims are an important business. Young, ambitious swamp runners are always looking for new mines and new peat bogs. Much of the Ukatish swamps are still wild. They hope to make a fortune. I need to make sure they can make claims and that they are respected. That keeps miners from murdering each other. Worth the trouble. What is a peat bog? It is a swamp that grows little pebbles of iron as years pass. Unbelievable, yes? The Ukatich, the Ukat gets its powers as a gift from our swamps. The iron takes time to grow, and sometimes thieves sneak in to steal it from the land's rightful owners. I look for cases of this and make sure the thieves are properly killed. Tell me about Ukatish iron. It is the finest iron in the known world. There is something in our land that makes iron with exceptional qualities. Our iron is the cruelest in the world. It's cruel iron. Ukatish iron is strong, easily worked, and not brittle. Yet when it takes an edge, it is a vicious, ragged edge. In weapons, it makes wounds that are horribly painful and heal slowly. Also, wounds that are prone to infection. This iron is what we use against the wretches who invade our swamps. 
Even though Master Camlo has been introduced to you, your presence is a constant worry and ir irritation for him. He doesn't know how to act around a Havenite or a prince. He wanders around the office entirely self-conscious. I'd like to discuss Ukatish politics. Oh, you should talk to Bracton Carr. He is in the Brock Clan house, southwest corner of town. He knows about clans and all that mess. Tell me more about those bounties you mentioned. The Brock gives me authority to pay bounty hunters in gold and iron. The swamps are dangerous. Monsters and raiders. We need to use force to destroy them. He checks his papers. For example, Pagarin's stake. It was lost to brigands. We need to take it back. What is Pagarin's stake? It is a productive iron mine to the north, not far from the ocean. Lost to bandits now. We need to retake it. Losing our mines sends a signal of weakness to the Borgen and Ganel. Tell me about these bandits. He checks his notes again. Well-armed, organized, persistent. They've driven off two efforts to dislodge them so far. Very strange. Strange why? Brigands are usually cowards. They grab and then disappear into the fens. They are holding the territory. It makes us suspect organized enemies. Like who? The bandits might be acting for the Gandal of Borgen clans. Both have been encroaching on Brock territory. If you find any evidence of this, it would be helpful to the people who worry about politics. I will keep that in mind, definitely. Yeah, I can't take that, of course. Someone right next to me wouldn't have worked anyway. Mm. Alright, continue looking around here. Some guards. Looks like a house in here. Oddly, the Yucatish don't always appreciate strangers breaking into their homes. They invite you to leave. Immediately. Alright, alright, we're leaving. Just looking around and all. Uh, you suddenly and involuntarily gag. This corner of the city smells vile. It's not just the tannery by the water. There is a massive graveyard, all mud, headstones, and the occasional bone protruding from the wet earth. It is bizarre, and the intense odor makes it very hard to keep from being a little sick. A bunch of mourners. Here's someone. The keeper of this giant graveyard is walking the paths, a shovel held over her shoulder. She occasionally directs a visitor to one corner or another, or talks to a mourning ukat about some recently lost family member. Then she notices you. She hurries to your side. You are the envoy. I was told about you. I am Sura. I am keeper of the resting place. I have been directed to discuss our customs with you. You wouldn't usually be welcome. What is a resting place? This is where the Ukatish of this region end. When they die, they are brought to this little plot of land to rest. As you walk, you would swear you occasionally feel a bone crunching in the soft earth under your boot. Who is buried here? All the Ukatish who die in Brock lands. Member of our clan or not. The smell of decay is making you feel faint. You're the only one who notice it. Everyone in this region? Everyone. Thank you for telling me. I didn't want to, yet I find I'm happy that you know. Odd. Anything else? I would not usually be allowed in here. This is a sacred place for the Brock. All of our history and memory are here. This is one place we try to save, where we don't need to see how much we repulse you. Why am I allowed here now? Bracton Carr told me that you were to be welcomed. You are to learn our ways. I don't know why, it's above me. I just dig graves. He said that Lady Brock gave this order. Very odd. Tell me about Lady Brock. She is the leader of the Brock clan, but she has been in seclusion for years. She mourns the lord of the Brock clan. Why do you think I am allowed? As long as our people have lived, you outsiders have hunted and insulted us. Yet our lady said that we were to welcome you. I honor her, as I, so I do. This is where our dead, rich or poor, are laid to rest. All Ukatish are united. Forever. Thank you for the honor. Sura nods. You are welcome. I find that telling you was not as unpleasant as I thought. Of course. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, so there's a tannery here? Yep, apparently so. The Yucatish leather workers are cleaning up skins and working them into good leather. It's dirty, smelly work. 
When they see you looking, they turn so that you can't see what they're doing. Shame? Or just protecting the secrets of their craft? Between the curing leather and the graveyard next door, the smells in here are troublesome even by Ukatish standards. Nobody but you seems to notice. The master of the workshop hurries up to you. A visitor! A customer! His unforced good cheer is a refreshing surprise. I am Master Zindelo. Let me help you into some leather. Tell me about your crafts. This is where fine Ukatish leather is worked into our unique swamp garments. Sadly, our work is always overshadowed by the fame of Ukatish iron. Yet I assure you that our leather is unique in its own way. How is the leather obtained? Our swamps are full of huge lizards, terrifying snakes, and even the occasional naga. When we hunt them, we make sure to save their skins. They have unique properties. What special qualities does your leather have? It is unusually warm, resistant to water, easy to clean, and well suited to travel through our swamps. Alas, it has a pervasive odor that can never ever be removed. It is a small price to pay. You're unusually friendly. For the Ukatish, you mean. We are a crude people, but I'm less sensitive to it than others. I mean, you think this place smells terrible, right? Well, yeah. Yes, but we need it to make leather, and we need leather to live in the swamps. So why worry about it? Who cares what the Ariel think? They have a problem with it, they can come here and complain. And I'll deal with them myself. Master Zindelo gives you his full attention as, he, as the scraping, curing, and working of lizard skins continues around him. Let me see your wares. Ukatish leather? Eh. Swamp Runner leather, which is a little better, but nah. And an Ukatish cap. While the Swamp Runner leather is pretty good, it's not as good as what we've got. I don't need anything. Also, let me th see something. I'm, I have a thought here. Huh. I thought we had a uh, physical armor boost somewhere in here. I guess I was wrong. Not much in here. I mean, there's some copper bits here, but we can't take any of it. Okay. Another building over here. Barracks. Ah, of course. You have met this man before. He is the huge warrior who rescued you and gave you your invitation when you emerged from Ganelspan. He's not thrilled to see you. Hello, Prince. I'm Bjorn, in case you forgot. I'm glad you arrived safely. Thank you for your help with the Ganel. Mmm, it was the Acton Lord's order, but you are welcome. He tests a barb on his spear with the tip of his finger. I'd like to know more about the Ukatish. I had to bring you a message. I did. I command my warriors, but I'm not a leader. I worry about clan business. Tell me more about your clan business. It is not my place to tell you. I follow my orders only. Talk to Bracton Carr. He was made acting lord by Lady Brock. Where is Bracton Carr? He lifts his spear and tests its heft in his hand. Look in the Brock Hall, southwest corner of town. Tell me about Lady Brock. She is the true leader of the clan, but she is old. She is in seclusion, honorable mourning. Understood. Thank you. Nothing there. Chinned artisans. Master Mander. The heat of this foundry is welcome after the chill of the Ukatish fens. Muscular warriors are taking the ore and bog iron of the swamps and turning it into long black strips of proper Ukat metal. Then it is worked into twisted weapons of unsettling viciousness. The master of the forge notes your attention and laughs. <laughs> Ugly, eh? Those blades and spears will make your enemies bleed. I am Master Manda. Look freely. Our ironcraft is the envy of Sacramentum. Tell me about your iron craft. Ukatish iron is unique. We make it into armor, true, but our weapons, they are fine and truly ugly. They are the defense of our swamps, and we sell them to others for wealth and prestige. Watch all you want. We aren't worried. We have no secrets. You call your own weapons ugly. Weapons shouldn't be beautiful. Our spears are made to cause as much pain and harm as possible to those who abuse the Yucatish. They are made to look it. Why do you let your rivals have your weapons? Because we use our barbed spears to defend the Yucat. Come into our lands and get a ragged scratch from our spears, and the infection will finish you. The Yucatish don't invade other lands. 
We are the victims of Sacramentum. You have no secrets. There is no secret to how all weapons are crafted. It is just good Ukatishan, the gift of our sacred land. You can't steal that. Well, not unless they steal your lands. Master Mander stands nearby as you look around. If you want to buy, say so. I would love to know that our ugly weapons are scaring posh nobles in the palaces of Haven. Barb Dukatish Spear, Barb Dukatish Glaive. It's pretty damn good. Even better than the spear here, but it doesn't have the uh, the chance to cleave, and it doesn't have the augmentation, so no thanks. Ukatish Breastplate is not as good as what we've got. I still find it interesting that the Volt Chainmail is so incredibly powerful. And the Ukatish Salad is not as good. Okay. I don't need anything, excuse me. Then I wish you a good, good day, outsider. Travel safe through our dirty land. Did I read that right? Was that actually... Did, did he really say travel safe through our dirty land, or did I misread? I have a feeling I misread. Either way, that's everything except the clan hall. I think that's a good way to finish this episode. The Hall of the Brock. This is the main meeting hall of Chind, where the clan comes for its biggest decisions and celebrations. This is where major envoys such as you receive their official greetings. Indeed, at the far end of the hall, someone is waiting for you. Not a noble, though. A rough-hewn swamp runner with a huge wolfhound sitting at his feet and gnawing on a bone. He stares at the maps and leather surrounding him, and his loathing is clear even from the far end of the hall. Oh, goody. You expected to find some scruffy Ukatish noble sitting behind the high table. Instead, you find a middle-aged swamp runner. He still wears his boots in dirty leathers, and he looks like he would much rather be out in some miserable stretch of muck and slime. He is feeding lizard meat to a huge wolfhound as you approach. The beast growls, and he says, Hunter, down! He looks up at you. You are the envoy of Haven. I'm Bracton Carr, and I speak for the Brock clan. How did you know to find me? Your warriors met me when I was escaping Ganelspan. Ah, yes. They told me the story. The Ganels were crazy enough to attack Haven Royalty. That's how they are. Now you are here. How do you like the Ukat? Dirty and miserable, I'll bet. I'm not bothered by your grime. He looks you over. You look down and realize that you're traveling in these lands that has left your once lovely clothes muddy and stained. I can see that, Prince. We've always admired the way Havenites endure what they need to to get a job done. That is why our shaman went to Ganelspan. The shade that guided you through there? I sent it. That was you. Why? We are used to outsiders using us. All we ask is that you is that we get something in return. You are here about the treaty between the Ukatish and Haven. You want us to be your vassals again. Yes, we do need to discuss our treaty. You are here so the matter can't be ignored. Lady Brock has given me the honor of making me acting lord for the Brock. If you want to make deals with us, you have to talk to me. He scratches Hunter behind the ears. So let's talk. You are the acting lord. That's the honor Lady Brock gave me. Force me to take the job. The Brock clan needs someone to do business. I do my duty. I'd rather be out in the swamps, as disgusting as you find that. What happened to the actual lord and lady? Lord Brock died in the old days. He was fighting for Haven, and he fell in battle. Lady Brock is in seclusion. That long ago? How did Lord Brock die? As I said, he was fighting for Haven. It wasn't unusual. Our nobles often fought with your soldiers when they were here. Lots of honor, lots of rewards, fantastic training... Usually, very safe. You Havenites fight well. Then some vol peasant shot him through the eye with an arrow. Bad luck. I would like to see Lady Brock. Bracton sighs and tosses a bone to Hunter. <sighs> Understandable, but she's in seclusion. Long period of mourning. You must talk to me. I'll speak for the Brock. And you were elevated to this post. Forced into it. Pulled away from the hunt. Forced to sit in this hall and listen to farmers argue. Lady Brock thinks I'm good at it. She gave the order. I had to obey. She knows I'm safe to put in the job. 
Why are you so safe? She knows that I'd rather die than be a true lord. I'm too dumb to plot or rebel. I trust my lady. We'll do what she wants. Me and Hunter. Right, boy? The massive dog rolls on his back in agreement. Bracton Carr slumps back in his chair and stares at you. You notice that he is wearing the red and black sash of the Brock, but it is hard to recognize under all the mud. As you talk, Hunter occasionally growls at you. It is a tense conversation. I want to know more about the Ukatish. There is a lot I could say. For what you want, though, you'll need to know about the clans. There are lots and lots of them, but only four strong enough to rise to rule. That's us, the Brock, and the Ake, the Ganel, and the Bolgan. How does a clan rise to rule? How does it ever happen? They seize the Hone Warren with arms, or they grow so strong they scare the existing leader out. The Brock want to rule. It's our time. We're not shy about saying it. However, we need more help to pry the Bolgans out of their throne. Tell me about the Ake. Bracton sneers. Merchants, they don't care about anything but coin. They just want someone to take over and settle things so they can sell you on. Tell me about the Ganel. You met them. They're strong. They are getting rich by holding Ganel span. They hate outsiders more than any of us. They just want Haven gone. You won't have any good dealings with them. And tell me about the Borgen. The Borgen have ruled for a century. They have held the home ward for so long that it's made them lazy and arrogant. Worse, they're getting greedy. They think they've earned our iron and our gold. They're not worthy leaders or allies for Haven. We must deal with them carefully, though. They hold the home warren, so they have the dragon. Uh, I'm sorry, um, dragon? For centuries, the dragon Gorsh has lived in a majestic ruin south of the home warren. The king gives a tribute, and it doesn't hurt us. Sometimes, for gold, it will slay foes of the king. We don't dare anger the Borgen too much, not without the help of a stronger power. Fascinating. I want to discuss our treaty with you. We knew this day would come. We Ukatish are crude, dirty peasants. We stink. Still, we're your property, and you want us back. I don't see the Ukatish that way. We know how people see us. We're used to it. We can endure it. It doesn't matter. We Brock aren't mindless like the Ganel. We want to deal with Haven. There is a need. You want to deal with me? We do. The Brock are strong, but we're in a bad position. The Ganel are to the south, hemming us in and bleeding us with tolls. But our noble leaders, the Bolgan clan, they're far worse. You want the Ukatish to be your vassals again? The Brock can make it happen. We have no choice. The Borgen are threatening you. They've ruled for a century. That's a long time for an Ukatish clan to hold the throne. They have started to think that they own their our entire land. They've been stealing our lands and mines plot by plot. Their raiders are growing arrogant. It is time for them to share rule. How can you make the Ukatish our vassals? We Brock are ready to fight. We just don't have quite enough strength to challenge the Borgen yet. On the other hand, with the support of a battalion of fine Havenite warriors, we could not lose. At least that is how it could be. For now, it is impossible. And what makes this impossible? You saw the problem yourself. There is one good road running from north to south. One road that can carry your army. The Ganel own it, and they truly hate it. Hate you. You saw that. Siding with Haven is a huge risk for the Brock. We can only take it if you break the power of the Ganel. Like I said, that is impossible. How can I break the power of the Ganel? You would have to go to the Ganel estate to the southwest and defeat Lord Loire of the Ganel himself. As long as that wily old toad leads from there, the Ganel will hinder everything you do. Why is this impossible? Because... Well, look at you. You don't have an army here, just you and some hirelings. If you were able to defeat the Ganel Lord and their fortress, we Brock could ally with you in a moment. It's just... No offense, I don't see much heroism in you. I am a Prince of Haven. I don't see a problem. 
Oh, when I was a child, I heard tales of the bravery of the Havenites. Lord Loire has been a thug, and he deserves punishment. If you can defeat him in his own fort, I know the Brock will be begging to side with you. Fascinating. So the Brock would be willing to to meet us. The door to the northern chambers of the Brock Hall is securely locked. The dog by the head table starts barking. Bracton Carr turns to you. Those are the quarters of Our Lady, and she is in seclusion. Please leave that door alone. Understood, and will be done. So, the Brock are willing to deal with us if we went and dealt with the Ganel estate. But I feel like we should also speak in the home warren. We'll need to make our way there, but we do have other quests here. A couple other quests. Brigands in the mine. I think perhaps we should go to the mine north of Chind. If we find it and can clear it out, we may find out more information about who sent them. And if it's Borgen, we may end up just turning against them immediately. But still, we have much information. We may go to Mercala first. As you leave the hall, a guard runs up behind you. He looks alarmed. He Leo turned to him. He says, I Excuse me, Prince. I'm sorry. I'm still shocked. You have been invited to meet with Lady Bronk. She is in seclusion, but she wishes to see you. She is in the northern rooms of the Great Hall. The guard turns and re-enters the hall. Okay, this episode's going to go a little longer, then. Let us speak with the lady. There's a bunch of guards and the like around here. This is a very big hall. All right, then. Let us speak with the lady. The room is mostly dark. It is warmed in the old Ukatish style, a small, low bonfire which puts off a lot of smoke and only a little light. The smoke chokes you. The Ukat is not a place for comfort. Then you see her. The old woman looks tiny in her carved wooden chair. She wears a black dress and veil decorated with red stars to represent the colors of the Brock clan. She looks up at you and squints. I am Lady Brock. I have summoned you. Hello. You are a prince, yes, of that mighty faraway land. I am a prince of Haven. Yes, we are both highborn. You more than I, but we share a burden. My burden finally drove me to this room, to solitude and mourning. Don't let me bother you. You are not. I called you for a reason. I wanted to see you. I need to break my seclusion. I have a good reason, and you are the opportunity. Tell me about the Brock clan. We are one of the greater clans of the Ukat. We rule the northern shores and reaches. There are many small clans, but only a few hold true power. Us, the Ganel, the Ake, and of course our current rulers, the Bolgan and the Home Warren. How long have you ruled these lands? Our clan has held these lands for four centuries. As for me, I was elevated to Lady long ago. Perhaps forty years, before the Calamity drove you from our land. The Brock were close to Haven then. My husband served at a high rank in your army. Me, I did my duty here. How did you come to be the leader of your clan? My father fell to a sickness, one, that many, one of the many that plagued the Ukat. I was the eldest child. I ruled for years, putting off my proper grief and mourning when our lord fell in battle. I need to discuss an important matter with you. She shakes her head. I have passed on that burden. You must speak to Bracton Carr outside. After I die, one of my children will return to Chin to master our hall. My children will share your burden. I will talk to Bracton. Of course, there are other matters we can discuss. She offers you some tea. Why are you in seclusion? I am in proper mourning for the Lord, my husband. A mourning long delayed by my duty. I have been pondering in this room for a long time. When did he die? Thirty-five years ago, only two years before the calamity. She wipes her eyes. I still remember the day I got the news. I was with my children in the main hall, and... No, I will not wander. How did he die? 
He was fighting for the armies of Haven. He was putting down a small rebellion in the Vol, and one of the dirty rebels he was fighting fired a lucky arrow. It was unexpected. When your armies march, few of your warriors fall. And you have spent years in seclusion. Yes. Bracton Carr is young, energetic, and a loyal leader in my absence. My children fight and trade elsewhere, advancing the cause of the Brock clan. And me? I mourn. I think. I learn. When did you quit ruling? Ten years now. Soon eleven. I've had a lot of time to think. What have you learned? I am not sure yet. That is why I asked you to see me. I have ideas. I need to test them, but I need help of one who travels far and freely. I'd like to know why you wanted to see me. You are very kind to spend time on the ramblings of an old sad woman. There are things I want. She pours you some tea. What do you want? I have mourned Lord Brock here quietly or actively for many years. It has given me time to think. And I want some objects. My lord was a campaigner for the armies of Haven. I want some mementos from the places he trained and fought. You're asking me to collect trinkets. I am. She is about to say something else, to elaborate on the reason for her odd request. Then she simply sips her tea and looks into the fire. What exactly do you want? First, I want you to go to the ruins of Fort Bannerspire. It is where my lord trained when he was young before his service. There, I want a memento of the time when the Brock learned to fight there. What is Fort Bannerspire? It is, was, a mighty fortress of Vol stone looking out over the northern sea. Warriors went there from all the clans and were trained by the officers of Haven. When Haven makes a people a vassal, powerful weapons and training come with it. Why is the fort a ruin? The treachery of the Vol. We brought their stone to make our fortress. The swampy ground there was not suitable, and the walls sank and crumbled. After the calamity, the embarrassing ruin was abandoned to beasts. What sort of memento do you want? Something bearing the colors of the Brock. Something to remind me of my glorious warrior marching in formation, flanked by mages and war shamans. Definitely something we can and will do. Interesting that we can't actually see these locations despite being told of them. We'll probably go to the Mercala Mines and then try and find these other spots up there. We do have the Ashen Foundry here, but we haven't gotten a quest for it. We'll probably get it after completing the uh, the other one for the miner. That said, I am going to end this episode here because it has definitely gone on long enough. Next episode, we'll head north from Dort... Dork Fartfen. Fort Dorkfen to the Mercala Mines. We may as well. It's a simple enough task. But that'll be in the next episode. So until then, I am Chester44. That is Rupert, Elspeth, Terence, and Patricia. This has been a Let's Play of Queen's Wish the Conqueror. And I shall see you all next time.